This is the Sales Bible Podcast, episode 333, Cold Calling is Not Dead, an interview with Tony Morris. Welcome to Sales Babble, the podcast that shares selling secrets for non-sellers. And now your host, Pat Helmers. Hello, sales babblers. This is Pat Helmers. And I'd like to start today with a quote from Mark Twain, who famously wrote, Reports of my death are greatly exaggerated. Well, according to Tony Morris, the same is true for cold calling. Oftentimes, the quickest and the fastest way to connect with a prospect is to pick up the phone. In this episode, Tony shares how to prepare for a cold call, secondly explains how to make a pitch that adds value to the listener, and he also shares scripts, stories, and examples of voicemails that have a one in three chance of getting returned. Awesome conversation, tons of fun, but before we get to that, I want to do a shout out to our sponsor, Sharetivity, who helps salespeople increase prospect engagement by providing an easy and fast way to personalize their outreach with LinkedIn. And so, with no further ado, let's get to it. Welcome, Tony. Are you ready to babble? Always ready. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, you're, you're a strong believer in cold calling, which is interesting mm. because I probably get an ad probably every couple months that says, Cold calling is dead, mm. but you don't. <laughs> but you don't agree with that, correct? Uh, absolutely, it, it's very much alive. I funny. I was talking to uh, Art Subcheck, one of the best, probably best cold callers in, in the history of cold callers, uh, yesterday about this on my podcast, and he said he said people who say it's dead probably mean there's either two things for it: one, they don't know how to do it properly, or they're trying to promote a product or service that they offer, um, which is the opposite of cold calling, some form of digital marketing maybe or social media type, the product that's the opposite of cold calling, So, which was interesting. But no, I've had and so many of my clients have had still so much success from cold calling when it's done correctly. So what, what's your definition of a cold call? Because cause sometimes that's where everything gets confusing. Yeah, absolutely. So I actually don't like the term cold call because as the name suggests, cold means you're going in cold, right? As in you don't know anything about them. You've not done your research. You're ill prepared. So I I know going back to art, he calls it smart calling, which I love. And I call it value calling. And what I mean by that term is I've always got value to give and share. So my definition of a value call is make sure you've done your homework, make sure you have a clear reason for your call, make sure you've done what I call my gap, which I'll talk about shortly, um, and and have that have a really great elevator pitch prepared with some really good questions ready to engage that prospect. So have your story ready to do a value call. Value calling. Mm. This sounds awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. So why don't we walk why don't we walk through this? What was the first one? There was one before reason. Yeah, you've got to have you've got to know why you're calling. So I always when I make a value call, I always set what I call my gap, which is my goal. So I have to I'm always thinking before I pick that phone up, what do I want to achieve as a result of that phone call? And it might be to book an appointment, it might be to make a sale, it might be just to get the key decision maker's name and mobile number. But I have a crystal clear and I set two goals always. So I've got a primary goal, which is what I really want. But I always set a secondary goal so that I still keep up positive momentum if I don't get my first goal. And the A in gap is what's my approach, which is all about my elevator pitch, right? What's my story going to be? And then finally, P is am I prepared for this call? So have I done my detailed research? Have I got questions prepared? Have I preempted objections they're going to throw at me? So I make sure I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. And then I make my call. If we could go back, I like this idea of goal. Because in that, in my mind, what I used to, what I commonly say is that's the idea of advancing the sale. Mm. That I'm not expecting to close every call that Mm. I make. But I am expecting to take the sale a little bit farther down because I know these things take time. Yeah, I I really like this idea of have a secondary goal. 
Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, but sort of. So a secondary goal could be for a lot of my clients, uh, and I train both B2B and B2C, the primary goal is normally to book a, um, either a face-to-face appointment or maybe a telephone appointment. But a secondary goal could be to get a mobile number. It could be to get an alternative contact name. It could be to book um, a different time to speak. So like what you've touched on, there's a there's the next step. But really, that the whole premise behind two goals is that you're, you're, unless you it goes to voicemail, you're always getting something out of that phone call. It's never a negative. So you can walk away at the end of the day if, if you've done sort of four hours of calling and you've not booked any appointments, but you've got 17 decision makers' names and mobile numbers, then you've had a great day. So it keeps that positive momentum going. Oh, look at that. I like that a lot. Mm. Now, now in the approach, you you talk about pitch. Yes. What's a it, good pitch? Oh, well, this is key for me. The, the biggest message I can say, Pat, to your listeners is this. Don't talk about what you do. Talk about what you've done successfully with people or businesses like them. So when I'm when I'm founding a company, my first thought is what what's the pain I can help them solve? Normally, I've done my research, so I understand a bit about that company and obviously the industry. And I, I, I'm without making too many assumptions. I've got a good idea of one of their pain points that I know I can help solve. And then what I'm going to do is prepare to tell them about another company like them that I've helped solve the same problem that they're currently facing. And I think that's a really important point. It's got to be a similar company. So there's no point me phoning someone like Apple and talking about how I've helped a very small startup tech business because they'll just, <laughs> you know, who's this right. for? But, but I've got to name drop someone maybe as big or successful as, as Apple if I can. And if I can't, then I'm going to talk about another company who's had exactly the same problem that they're having. And and really, that that's the premise. But if I may, let me give you an example of one real life one. So uh, I do a lot in the property, the real estate sector. And I know in the UK at the moment, one challenge there, well, I mean, before Corona, this is one challenge they were facing in February was they got a lot of people who want to rent property, but they don't have enough stock. They don't have enough property to rent. And that's a real problem. And, and I've genuinely helped letting agents solve that issue. So my call, Pat, would go something like this. Good morning, Pat. Thanks for taking my call. It's Tony Morris here from TMI Academy. Uh, are you familiar with my business? They'll probably say yes or no. And if they say no, I'll say, look, just to make you aware, we've successfully helped over 83 letting agents, the likes of Foxtons, Black Cats and Martian Parsons, by helping them double their rental stock without spending an extra penny on marketing. So to see if I can help you, what are you doing at the moment to proactively grow your letting stock? So if you break that down, I've not shared anything about me. I've not told them that I'm an author or a speaker or I've won awards because all irrelevant. It's boring to them. All I've done is I've name dropped people they would know of a similar agency to them. And I've told them a really good success story of how I've helped people like them solve a problem that I know they're going to have. And then I've asked a great open question to engage them about that problem. Does that make sense? I like it. Yeah. What if people, what if people don't answer, though? What if it goes to voicemail? Yeah, well, look, my my favorite, I've got two voicemail techniques that I like. One is I call it the curiosity voicemail. And it is literally as simple as this. Hi, Pat, it's Tony. Will you give me a ring? 07915-645-267. Thanks. And I, I don't mention my company name. I don't mention the reason of my call. And, and, I, and I use informal language like I know you. And, and I get a, about 30% call me back and say, hi, Tony, it's Pat here. I, I got a call from you earlier. Yeah, Pat, thank you so mm-hmm. much for returning my call, you know. So that, that works really well. Uh, I know a guy yeah. who does that, but that's not very British. No, it's not. And and I think <laughs> I, I think I learned that from an American speaker, actually, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and I loved it. 
you know, I thought, what a clever idea. And, you know, whenever I learn these new ideas, I think I've got to try it. I tried it and I start getting the best return rate I'd ever got. And once it works right, you've got to keep doing it. The second one, the second one I call the cutoff voice, man. I've learned this recently and I'll go, hi, Pat, it's Tony Morris here. I want to talk to you about, and then I put the phone down. So I, I give my number, sorry. I say, you know, I want to talk to you. Uh, uh, give me a ring back on 07 Blah Blah. I really want to talk to you really exciting about, and then I put the phone down. So that normally gets a call back. You know, if you get the excitement levels up enough in the voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> That works. <laughs> you like that one? Uh, hacks. What a hack. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, interesting. Interesting. But, but the, the approach is so key. It's, you know, the message. So many salespeople who, who cold call, but, you know, do it properly. They've always got a success story to talk about how they've helped someone like them. And, and yes. when they do that research and they've got value to then give and they prepared really good questions. And like I mentioned, they preempted every objection. So I'm ready. If my if my prospect says we already have a training company, I've got an answer or they say, you know, my team are doing really well at the moment. You know, we don't need training. I've got an answer. So I've, I've thought of every objection pretty much that I could ever expect. And I've got the answer for it. I like it. Very, very, very interesting. Preparation. How much preparation is too much preparation or how much preparation is too little? (laughs) Yeah, good question. Really good question because I've got some of my clients doing 150 calls a day, you know, to CEOs of, you know, quite big size organizations. And when you're doing that number, it's quite hard to prepare before every call. So my my suggestion to them is, and this is what I notice top performers do, right, is they prepare on their weekend or they prepare in an evening and they'll have a list. You know, those 150, they should have their angle or their approach already prepared because otherwise it goes back to what I said earlier. It's a cold call. And I just don't believe in today's world you ever need to cold call. I I think you can always do a bit of homework. But I guess to answer your question, you know, I think as long as you've got a story to tell. So when I make when I make a value call, I, 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 I've I got a good idea. I know who I'm targeting and I believe they're the decision maker. But obviously, I ask that question in the call just to confirm before I book an appointment. And because that would be my primary goal. But I also I've already got my story ready. So and that can take me sometimes 30 seconds to prepare maximum it might take me two minutes to prepare but it never really more than that and uh and then i'm ready to do it because i, I suppose i'm used to it but i even though I've, I've had 21 years of success doing this i prepare for every single value call that i make hmm. for 150 calls because that, 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 this is my second call how many calls is reasonable to do in a day because lots of times i've found if i send 10, 15 minutes, yep. you know, trying to figure out who they are, look them up on LinkedIn, trying to understand where they're at. I've had people here on the podcast that uses um, um, Crystal 360 to try to figure out the personality yeah. of the person, you know, yes, I've heard of that. that this, this stuff could take a while. So now I have spent my 10, 15 minutes. I'm all set. I make my call. We chat. Then I got to put it in the CRM. That takes five, 10 minutes, right? Yeah. I can type, yeah. type up what I said because I'll forget. I'm a very forgetful person. Say, wow, we've just we've just blown 20, 25 minutes on one call. Yeah. So I, I got two things on that. One, I always believe you should have what, what I call my hit list. Who are the dream prospects you want to work with? And and I go into that, you know, in my sales training, I talk about how do you know who your dream hit list is, right? But every I believe every top performer should have at least 50 companies they'd love to work with and know why. And and therefore, and then I do my homework on that hit list in what I call non-call time because I travel a lot, right, with work. So when I'm on the train traveling maybe two hours to speak at a conference or run a training program, that two hours is invaluable to me. And I'm on, I'm on Google, I'm on LinkedIn, and I'm doing my homework, building my, preparing my, my hit list so that when I 
I, I'm when I'm sat at my desk ready to do value calls, and I, I like to do them in power hours. I, I, you know, when I do a day of prospecting, I'll probably do four power hours in a day. And uh, those calls, the only time is spent just on the phone call, not doing any homework because I've done that already. And I, I believe top performers work like that because, you know, if if you spend 30 minutes, you know, time just to make a five minute call, which, by the way, could go to a voicemail. You know, it's just not, I believe, not time well spent. There's no point doing 30 minutes research and then leaving a, a voicemail. I, I think do your research before and have it ready. And, and then you made a point, Pat, about updating your CRM, which obviously is vital. I've also got a terrible memory and so many salespeople do. So I make very clear notes when I'm on the phone. It's just in bullet points. And at the end of my day or at the end of a power hour, I then update my CRM. So I use HubSpot. And I would then spend maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes updating my CRM. Then I'll probably be on a break. And then I'm back on the phones. Because I, I believe once you've got the momentum going, you don't want to break that flow and break that momentum. That's something we used to call uh, sales hours and non-sales hours. Ah. That during sales hours, you're making the phone calls. And during non-sales hours, you're prepping. Totally. And I still believe that works today. Interesting. So interesting. Stories. You said you would often tell a case story. Yeah. So I like to call them, rather than case studies, for example, I like to call them success stories. So I've always got Mm. up my sleeve. I've always got up my sleeve a success story of, again, someone I've helped like them. So if I take my example, phoning a a letting agent, you know, in real estate, I I name drop three companies that I know they're going to, the decision maker is going to know. And I've just given the headlines, right? I've just said the key headline was I've helped them double their stock without spending an extra penny on marketing. Now, and that's that's true. I would never state anything that I've not achieved because, you, you know, you get caught out, you look stupid, it ruins your reputation, right? Yep. yep but I've only yep. given a headline and it's an engaging headline because most decision makers will go, wow, how the hell did you do that? And I would say that's the first thing I'm going to talk to you about in a meeting before we organize that meeting let me just ask you to make sure that we're the right fit for each other and then i'm asking some really good qualification questions but in that call they might say well no no i really i'm happy to meet with you but can you tell me a bit more and then i've always got the success story ready be for that reason because they might just push me on it i want to know more so i'm ready to share it and then what i do is i then book the appointment And I send an email confirmation later on. Like I said, I do that in non-calling time, like you said. And in the email, I write this line, Pat. It says, when I talk about how good I am, it's bragging. But when my clients do, it's proof. And I attach, um, a I import a video testimonial in that email, which would normally be the, one of the success stories that I, I touched on on that phone call so that before they've met me, they've got, you know, they've checked, they've got the email confirmation that will go in their calendar, diary invite, but then they watch the video that's got my clients talking about how successful, how much we've helped them rather than me showing off. I love it. Mm. So I love that. I love that. So interesting. Look, trust is everything, right, in sales and credibility. And I believe there's no better way in today's world to build very quick trust and show you're a credible source than getting your clients to talk about it for you. So wherever I can, I use relevant video testimonials, written, and obviously I, or I'll, I'll send them a link to my review site if I feel that's more applicable. Trust is everything. And I think that's what we're really in short of these days. Nobody trusts anybody. We see this in our politics, you yeah. know, and some of it's because of the internet. There's so much choice. It's actually hard to choose. Yes. It's hard to know what's the best choice. It's often easier to do nothing. Yeah. And that's who you're really competing with lots of time is uh, no decision versus making a decision to purchase you. So that goes to what you said before, which I think is right on on the mark, is this idea that you're not trying to tell them much about you at Mm. first. You're trying to do the best you can to ask them questions so that they get this sense that, number one, Tony listens. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> and it sounds like every time I say something, he goes, yeah, yeah, I've seen that before. I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might, I think he can help me, but I don't know how. Mm. Totally. Totally. And, and I, I find Pat, so many salespeople that I work with, and I've you know I've, I've coached over thirty thousand now over over the last fourteen years. They don't follow the basics. They don't follow the you know. I'm sure a lot of your listeners have heard of the eighty twenty, the Pareto law, and but they don't abide by it. You know, it's great salespeople should only be speaking about twenty percent on a on a on a call, and get the buyer, the prospect, speaking eighty. But in my experience, and I've listened to probably a thousand sales calls or more, it's normally 80, 20, the wrong way round. You know, yeah. we've all heard the two ears, one mouth. Most salespeople I've trained, they've got five mouths, one ear, you know, yeah. just do it the wrong way round. So you brought this up. This, this is something I've probably people are wondering. What, what's, what is Tony Morris International? So we're a, a, an international sales training company. So I, we've got a, a team of experts who to go into corporations of all sizes, all industries, and teach people how to sell and teach sales managers and leaders how to lead and manage more effectively. So in, in, in the last 14 years, we've helped now just over 300 companies across actually 62 different industries, believe it or not. Um, and, and I've personally spoken now in 25 countries around the world at sort of sales kickoff conferences, which has been an incredible part of my journey. Yeah. Excellent. So if people wanted to find you online, Tony, how would they do that? Yeah, loads of ways. I, I would say check me out on LinkedIn on uh, just type in Tony Morris, Killer Sales. So I'm, I'm the creator of Killer Sales <laughs> Inside the Mind of a Serial Seller. Um, I would check out great, my- Great tagline. I got to interrupt you here. Yeah. You like that? <laughs> awesome. I love that. Yeah. It, it... I, I apologize, but I just couldn't let that pass Thank you. It wasn't so good when I spoke at a conference in Feb, um, a big sales conference, and the, the compare he introduced me as Tony Morris, creator of Killer Sales, inside the mind of a serial killer, and I, and I was like, <laughs> "He's got that wrong." So when I stood on stage, I said, "Let's talk about Ted Bundy," which was a I've never started a talk like that in my life, but um, you know, it was funny. But, what we can learn from Ted, but what salespeople can learn from exactly, Ted Bundy, exactly the power of persuasion, right? Um, the power yeah, of yeah. there's a couple of websites if you go to probably the best one is my training website which is tmi so that stands for tony morris international tmi training academy.co.uk and that's all about my sales training and and actually pat i'd love to give your your listeners a a, a gift of mine I've, I've written i mentioned i've written five books on sales so any of your listeners that go onto that website there's a, a, um, a, a free book there, my first book I ever wrote on sales called Coffees for Closers. And there's a copy of my ebook. They just put their name and email in and it gets emailed straight to them. So I'd love to give that to your listeners. So will they get the good leads, the Glen Gary leads? The Glen Gary leads, absolutely, baby. Put the pen <laughs> down. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> one of the best films of all time, right? I, I love it. Yeah. Very good title. Good absolutely. <laughs> And then my speaking website is Tony Morris salespeaker.com. So um, any of your listeners uh, want to watch my videos of me delivering talks or, you know, want, want, want my advice and help to speak at a conference, that's the best place to find me. Cool. I'll make absolutely certain that those links are in the show notes. So that Fantastic. people are, are driving right now. You don't have to pull over and, and take, take notes. Um, yeah, absolutely. You can find it on the web at Sales Babble. Tony, thank you very much for visiting us here in Sales Babble. This oh, has mate. been uh, this has been great. No, well, thank you for having me. Really enjoyed it immensely. Um, honored to be on your on your show. So, thank you so much, Pat. Sales starts with getting your prospects' attention. Given all the noise, you have to be different. You have to personalize your outreach. Unfortunately, it's time-consuming to go to Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube to find an icebreaker. It's a conundrum because you know personalized outreach converts significantly higher than canned emails. Picture the possibility that with one click, you could get a social footprint of your prospect, which would make personalized outreach faster. With Sharetivity, you instantly discover personal information 
regarding your interests, college, and social media posts on LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. With Sharetivity, you can make each outreach personalized, yet fully automated to fill your pipeline. Sharetivity is a Chrome extension. Search for it in the Chrome Web Store. It only takes two minutes to download, and soon you'll be skyrocketing your prospecting productivity today. Sharetivity. One-click personalization. Hey guys, this is Pat at 630-768-3134. Give me a call when you get back. I want to tell you about this. To connect with Tony and to get a copy of his book, Coffees for Closers, you can find links to him and the show notes at www.salesbabble.com. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your friends. It's one of the best ways to get the word out. And if you got a question or a comment, don't hesitate to reach out by clicking on the Babble Me button at www.salesbabble.com. We would love to see you this Thursday and join us at the Sales Babble Telebabble. It's a conference call where like-minded people share interesting information about sales and get selling advice. That's at Thursday, 4 o'clock Central, 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Pacific. Thanks again for taking a moment to listen to our podcast. Really appreciate it. Until next week, take care and have a highly successful and profitable selling day. Thank you for listening to the Sales Babble podcast. Find us at www.salesbabble.com. This is a production of Abenero Media.